Welcome back, everybody. We are the X1 Bros. This is your positive gaming and Xbox One community. Thank you for being here and tuning in. This is podcast number 313. As always, I am joined by the bros, the X1 Bros. It's Mr. McSpicy. What's going on? It's Jordan the Man. And oh. I am X1. Welcome to the show. It was a big week this week. We got our first real next generation console event. It was like E3 happened virtually. And it was the PlayStation 5 event that happened. Now, this is an Xbox podcast, so we're going to focus on the third-party games that were announced, that were shown off during that show. <laughs> but before we really jump into those, what uh, overall thoughts on how PlayStation did with their their reveal? I mean, the Xbox and PlayStation are just so tied uh -huh. together. Yeah. You know, one thing, one one does one thing, the other does another thing, yeah. and we compare yeah. them, right? So, Jordan, what was your impressions of, of their, their event overall? No, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, they basically just came out. They had that little thing right at the beginning, right, where they talked to you, and then from that point forward, it was just uh, all trailers. Yeah, I and and that's and honestly that's, that's my that's, favorite way to do things. That's what you. Yeah. That's and that's that's what we want. I remember that first E three. Um, was it when Phil Spencer first took over, or maybe it was the next E three after that? But remember, he he basically hyped up. Uh, we're bringing games. We're bringing games, and that's all it was. It was yeah. like yeah. he talked for a couple minutes at the beginning, and then little interjections here and there, but nothing lo longer than a minute. And it was just trailer after trailer. That's the best way to do it. That's my favorite. Yeah, way it's to the best do way that. to do it. Yeah. Uh, overall, I mean, PlayStation just does a really good job of huh? presenting. I th I thought that they did uh, a decent job. I was surprised at how many third party titles were shown. As opposed to exclusives. For mm. exclusives for PlayStation, here's what we got. Sackboy. Horizon 2, which actually that made me want to go play Horizon Zero Dawn. That, that by far, that's their golden child, Horizon 2, right? Like, mm -hmm. on their PlayStation exclusive. You got uh, Ratchet & Clank, their new Rift Apart. That which, game looked great. Yeah, I actually told someone yes, uh, yesterday, who is a PlayStation guy, he was telling me all the games that he thought, and I said, I think that was the best Besides the Horizon one, that one is the one that I would be most excited it for. It great. Yeah. I'm excited for that one because the old Ratchet & Clank, well, not the old one, but the, the previous Ratchet & Clank that was on the uh, PlayStation that they made a movie out of and released yeah. and stuff, I'm just going to say it was was kind of crappy. It was just boring. It was so boring. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. so, whereas the previous Ratchet & Clanks are actually really good. They, they, they've, I really like Ratchet & Clank, which is why I got the last one, but it just it was it was just... It dragged. You yeah. know what I mean? A little. It wasn't bad, but it dragged. So I'm actually really excited for this new Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, this was uh, just the amount of stuff happening on screen. It felt oh, yeah, next cool. gener like a next generation 3D Very platformer. Cool, yeah. mm -hmm. It felt good, right, Spicy? That Ratchet. The oh yeah, Ratchet and Clank. I, I think that game is especially being developed in a certain way to show off the high bandwidth that the hard drives are capable yeah. of. Like you notice the ability in the game where he links to the next section. Yeah. And he opens the new world op just right he, there. He breaks a rift in the world, and then he's right there. Mm -hmm. And even on the, uh, I believe it was the beginning when we weren't seeing gameplay, it was like the trailer part. Uh, he was falling through different worlds on top of each other. Yeah. Um, and I think that game kept, they when they were developing that game, they knew that they were going to have, obviously they are going to have high-speed bandwidth yeah. for the hard drives, right? Yeah. So uh, that game, I believe, is going to showcase kind of the high bandwidth. And that's, that's, how, it, that's how it felt, like a showcase. Yeah. It, it, was, it was really cool. It was cool. They, and I dig the art style. Yeah. I like that Pixar hey man, style. They showed off Gran Turismo 7, which, I mean, good for Gran Turismo for being in there. Nothing super impressive for me there. Well, and we've already seen stuff from that, and... It, it it didn't look as good as it did now. So they've they're obvious. Yeah. It, it looks a lot better than it yeah. did. So that's good. Uh, a remake for Demon Souls. Yes. Oh, which the, for those of you that <laughs> don't know, <laughs> yeah. Demon Souls was a PlayStation exclusive. Is a PlayStation exclusive. <laughs> it is Dark Souls. It was the first Dark Souls. The Soul reason game. they made a Dark Souls is because Sony owned the rights to Demon Souls, the name, the IP. And so they were just like, okay, <laughs> we're gonna make a new game called Dark Souls. <laughs> Yeah. And that's just how that because then they own their own, you know, they could put it on a different platform. I actually think a remake on a new generation con is really smart because this came out on PlayStation 3. So this was. This, that's it's right. It's been a while. It was PlayStation Demon's 3. Yeah. So well, and I wonder if they're still going to have the. Uh, the game's but, hard. Well, was <laughs> in that game, that game, <laughs> the multiplayer was terrible, right? Yeah. Was and there then, multiplayer? Yeah, that was the one Souls? with the soul. That was the one with the soul. It was either that one or the first Dark Souls. What I might have been the multiplayer? Don't think. Demon yeah, Souls was it? Was it? Okay, was it? Was it Dark Souls that had the horrible? Because it was like yeah, it was. The it, it was like a those, random thing you could never play with your, your friends. Your soul stones. Yeah. It was just yeah. randomly yeah. got put, and, and then they just, fixed it in the second one. You're right. I think it was Dark Souls. So Demon Souls was just Demon uh, Souls. Single player. 
is, I think, in my opinion, the hardest rendition of the style of game. Oh, yeah. It's a difficult one. I wonder if they'll add multiplayer in the remake. That would be actually, a, it would make the game easier. Because <laughs> then there's there's uh, two people for that boss to pound. Yeah. A new little big planet was shown. Hey, which, Sackboy. Yeah. Yeah, Sackboy. He's, um, he's cute. He's their then, version of. Did you ever play those games? They're, that's like the original Mario Maker game. No, I've never played. I never there, played it's it's a very good game. Is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. It's a very good game. Um, it'll that that game alone should sell consoles. The other game that got me excited was Odd World. That's a third party game, actually. Uh, Are we talking about third party now? Because that was going to be my pick out of all the games. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go. We'll come back to that then. Okay. We'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, and then finally, they also shot off uh, Spider Man. Um, Miles Morales. Miles Morales, which everybody got excited for, only to find out the next day <laughs> that that actually is just standalone DLC, essentially, for so, the Spider-Man that's out now. Yeah, when so it's I've, not a full game. Well, hold on. So this is weird how they how it, this game ha, has been kind of marketed. It's an and, Overwatch and, 2 situation. Well, well, it's weird because... It is an Overwatch 2 situation, kind of. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> I think they should have said something... I think they should have said it differently how they said it. So the game is a standalone DLC that's only available on the PS5. It's not available on the PS4. So it's a DLC for a game <laughs> that you can't play unless you upgrade your box. Which will... Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. So that pisses you off a little bit, right? Hearing that? It really kind of... The first time I heard that, I was like, what the hell? But then you look into it a little bit more, because that's kind of how they're, they're just saying it's, it's DLC, only available for the PS5. Um, and you're like, wait a minute, what? You find out that they, so they, people have been talking about it, how it's just kind of, it's, it's like a side story. It's a side story of Miles Morales, which I think is a great character. And I think he's, he's, he's a cool character, even just by alone in the comics, but in the game, he's a great character, um, that aside, but you have the, how they said it and how it's been like interpreted is it's a DLC and it's the same game but just a little bit with Miles Morales in it. Okay, how I would have said it or how it should have been said is what we did was use the same game engine that we have and, brought and it to the next we gen. upgraded the graphics yeah. and we have we have your main protagonist be Miles Morales and it is a fantastic game. Uh, we upgraded, you know, it's it's Spider-Man Engine 2.0. Yeah. And it's a standalone available for the PS5. Yeah. That's how you should have said it. Yeah. Does it that was, make sense? They tried to kind of hoodwink you when you didn't need to hoodwink. You, you know felt what I mean? hoodwinked when you didn't need yeah. to be hoodwinked. No, uh, Fitzy in chat says uh, it's a full game in the vein of Far Cry New Dawn or Uncharted The Lost Chapters. Yeah, basically standalone we'll see, and DLC. That's, that's what I wonder. What's the uh, time going to... Because when you say DLC, you think, ah, like four or five hours. You I, know what I mean? Yeah, sub, sub 15, right? Yeah. Sub 10. And when you think DLC, you also don't think $60. I, think, I believe it's already announced it's $30. $30? $30? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So cool. I would have just said it's built on this on an upgraded. Oh, maybe game not. Engine. Maybe they said around ten dollars, little man boy. Oh, oh. Well, maybe it's only ten dollars. Oh. Well, well, then uh, we're definitely talking sub ten hours. Oh, ten oh, hours. Ten there hours. We go. Yeah. Oh, it's ten yeah, hours. So I thought so. I thought it was thirty dollars that was announced. Yeah. Ten hours isn't bad. But ten hours for thirty dollars is not bad. The game itself wasn't that like an eighteen-hour game. Okay, am I wrong? For I hundred percented it. I think. I think if hours. I think you can. Yeah, I think you're right. I would say I anywhere between can, 15 to 20 you if can, you 100% it. You can beat it at like 8 to 10. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So. so overall, again, I think PlayStation did a good job. Now, the question is, can Microsoft match it? And I don't – I ready for this, and I don't mean this as a fanboy of Microsoft, but I will say it as a fanboy. I absolutely think they – I don't think the bar was set that high to match – yeah, to match this, which is a lot of hype. I, you know, you're really, the excitement of a new console, new well, games. Right? Think, First I, time we got to see it. I think it comes down to we got no new IPs for next gen shown at all from PlayStation. Oh, like original IPs, like new, yeah. new. Yeah, okay, we do know that right. Xbox um, Series there X. There wasn't. No. I thought that we had some indie titles in there. For ha- well, perhaps for uh, third party. Third party or oh, what? not exclusive. Exclusive, yeah. A new IP. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I gotcha. Um, it's all. I mean, Horizon Two looks fantastic, and that actually makes me want to play Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah, the first yeah. one. Everybody says it's one of the best, one of the best RPGs ever made. Uh, but 
I don't I don't know that the bar was set that high with that. I it it usually Sony what Sony does is they'll show something that's like three years off this brand new game. Check it out, right? Boom, and then it kind of sets the tone. They didn't do that here, and okay. I think Microsoft has an opportunity with all their new studios. I think we're gonna get one, maybe two giant new yeah. IPs announced. But that won't be. That'll be next month. That'll be next week. Yeah. yeah. So well, what I think is I don't know. It's going to be interesting because PlayStation has the, I mean, even though, uh, you know, a good handful of them are third party, right? They got the hype of like, oh, man, look what these games are going to be like on PlayStation, right? Yeah. Now, what's Microsoft going to do with their hardware event? Are they just going to, is it going to be like PlayStation's hardware event they had earlier where the guy gets up and just talks about hardware for a while? Are they going to integrate gameplay trailers into that? You know, what what is it going to be? And I think that's what's going to I think what we're going to see is games games that we already know about. So I would imagine if I were to do it, if you're focused on hardware, I imagine you're going to show off like uh, Hellblade 2 yeah. because we already have seen a trailer for that. That's not a big surprise. But that, that's my question. If they're focused yeah, on very the hardware, are they going to – because, for example, the reason – Well, and you got to realize too, where Xbox has – Xbox is all about – we're launching with thousands of games in well, your yeah, library yeah, 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 because yeah. of so what they're going to do is show off their technology with last generation like check games. out here's Forza Horizon 7 look how it looked on the Xbox One X look how look what we could do with that mm-hmm. on the next gen I can see that yeah, yeah I, I think that But will be will that will that I mean, I th- well, I guess doing that will probably hold them over till next month. All I, what I'm saying is, PlayStation has the hype because they showed their new exclusives, yeah. and then if you have Xbox come out and just talk about hardware, it's going to be kind of like, okay, well, we know it's going to be powerful. Yeah, what's going to be on it? You know what I mean? Because let's be honest, when it comes down to it, it's all about the, the game. Right? The name of the game is the game. Uh, well, I mean, that's kind of where PlayStation kind of tripped up a little bit when they had that yeah, announcement they, that's for what the hardware yeah. announcement. And everybody was going there, you know, thinking that it was going to be a lot more than what it was. Which actually, I found that announcement it, a it was hilarious because it was Dana Carvey. It was a Dana Carvey. Yeah, yeah. it was a total in front of in front of shadow <laughs> in front audience. of fake people. Uh, that was, like, that was totally, the mistake. Don't totally, do that. It totally <laughs> felt like an SNL skit. <laughs> but besides that, I actually found what they said on that fairly interesting. Yeah, um, well, yeah, the technology and stuff. Yeah, right, yeah, but that was not meant for a reveal that was a or a so hype, yeah. you know, but but they gave the impression that it was. Yeah. Is Microsoft gonna make that same no, mistake? See, and that's I what that's what I'm curious I don't think about. So. You know I don't think so because of how they because it's going to be during their inside Xbox, right? Like because the way they're well, called they, the Xbox, Xbox twenty twenty. The way it sounds is this tw- Xbox twenty twenty is all about the hardware and the next one is all about their exclusive games coming, right? Yeah. Then that's my understanding. It's hardware so this month. That's why I mean well, that's so, why I'm wondering is it gonna still, be that you could still you yeah, could what no. you could do is show off some third party games too mm-hmm. on this have them and maybe you know, they'll do an Assassin's Creed again. Or I would be willing to bet they do Cyberpunk. Yep. To show yep. off, we've not seen anything from Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Maybe has been it's going to be the genitals. The, yeah. genitals, the custom genitals custom, with our processing power. <laughs> Look how you, <laughs> this is the this is the beginning. So first you had like the you know you had the the guns that you can only get like three guns and then. And then, uh, then these games come out that where it's like a random generated gun. And then there's billions of different variations. Have, yeah. There's going to be billions of variations yeah. of genitals. They'll have guys in black tank tops, black turtlenecks, on a white backdrop, <laughs> talking about, with a British accent, <laughs> we've revolutionized gaming forever. <laughs> forever. Forever. And Revolutionary. Thanks, thanks to the power of the Xbox One X. Series X. You, Series X. You are now able to do things with genitals that you've never been able to do before <laughs> in gaming. Uh, I actually think that would get a lot of hype. Honestly, yeah. I think, I think a lot of me, yeah, that would There be are a, more than three trillion different variations possible. <laughs> That's never been heard of before. Not in gaming. Different sizes, different lengths. What this... With what, the new direct pipeline to generation, the hard drives, we've been able to... What this generation <laughs> has really truly enabled us to do is break free from the constraints previously put on us <laughs> with genitals. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's what I'm. Yeah, that's how. That's what they're gonna do. Yeah. They're gonna lead with that. <laughs> I would. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> no, so I. I think. I think uh, since it's in that Xbox 2020 wrapper, um, right? Their show. 
I think I don't think it's going to be like the developer conference that was the PlayStation hardware event, right? Yeah. A fascinating thing, but uh, it was an SNL skit with Dana Carvey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> uh, uh, well, we do have a question. Before we move on, I want to we want to go over the third party games that were yeah. announced so that we could talk about. It. But before that, we did uh, get did get a question from Loyal Doyle. The he Doyle. says, "Now that we've seen what the Series X and PS5 both look like, which are you into more solely?" For sex appeal, which one do you think looks better? Jordan raised his hand. Go ahead. Oh, I just do that naturally. Sorry. Um, I. It feels like it's the same thing happening all over again, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Because Sony is more of a hardware company, right? They've always had cool designs. Even the PlayStation Four was a cool design, where it was kind of like you know split weird, oh, yeah. right? The yeah. the PlayStation Three, although got a lot of flack, I liked the George Foreman look. I sure. think the PlayStation 3 looked cool, right? The George Foreman. No, it was, it was the George Foreman. It <laughs> yeah, really yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was fantastic. They yeah. should have had him sign it on the top. <laughs> but um, As seen on TV. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was great. No, I always have liked the look of the PlayStation. I think the best-looking Xbox was the 360 because it had that curve mm. going on the inside. Mm-hmm. After that, I mean, the Xbox has just been... It's just been a box. You know, it's nothing like fancy. It doesn't look bad. It doesn't look great. You know what I mean? It's just. But the thing is, is what do you like better, right? Do you like that nice, sleek, square, that sleek design? But but just based off of look, what do you prefer between Xbox and PS5? I think the. What we've seen. I think the PlayStation is cool looking. I think what makes. I think it's cool looking. I like the design, but I would like to see it in a different color. Yeah. The PlayStation? Yeah, the white. With, with that design, just doesn't do it for me. Really, I would like to see it in a different color. Like, what would it look like in all black? Gunmetal, black with that blue light. You know what I mean? Gunmetal. Yeah. I do think. Um, I do think it looks. Sexier. But I think the PlayStation. Well, yeah, it's, it's got more flair for sure. But that being said, I mean, there is. I do like the sleek. It's the Xbox is just a sleek tower. It's you know what un. I mean? It's unassuming. Yeah, it's just. It's just. There's it. it you know, there's there's beauty in simplicity. Yeah. You know uh, what I mean? Spicy. What about you? I'm a sucker for a traditional stormtrooper. Like oh, yeah. I, I look at my PCs. I build them in white casing with black lining. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's. I uh, did, and the, what pe- people are in chat are saying it looks like a router. It kind <laughs> of does. It looks like maybe a, it is a router. And it looks like it looks like a female genitalia. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. cyberpunk. They'll have a cyberpunk yeah. edition. Um, I d- I do like the blue lighting. I like blue lighting on white electronics, like the LED. I think it looks good. I really like it. Um, I, it's, I I think it shows a little bit of power in it too because of the. It's got like this. It's got to be the intake for all the cooling yeah. that's got to go. You know, it's yeah. going around the inside uh, of the black. But I I mean, if I could have my phone be white, I love white electronics. I yeah. just love the look and well, with like black in, insides or black buttons or like you know, I just like it. And I've always liked it. Well, interestingly enough, I've heard a lot of people talking the way it was, and same with the Xbox. And I mean, this probably pushes the design of all the consoles, but the way the PlayStation is the way it is is probably because of airflow and heat, right? For sure. Because it looks yeah. like, because you know how it's got the white edges and then it's got that black in the middle? It looks like the air is going to come out all down that middle. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, yeah. Man, so. It kind of looks like a stormtrooper to me, or an Alienware PC, or a router. I get it. But I like light electronics. Yeah. I like those things. A vanilla Choco Taco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's hilarious uh, from chat. Let's jump into what I'm most excited about, and that is the third-party games that were shown off at uh, PlayStation at the PlayStation event. The first one uh, is Project Athea. One more down. Yeah, this one. Oh, no, that's Ratchet Clink. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I would have I mean, found we, that out eventually. We're there. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, Project Athea is looks to me like a witch action adventure game from from Square Enix. Uh, Square I, Enix, man. I think this looks cool. I like. There's a lot of this. Like, I think one of the themes that we're seeing is a lot of like, um, what is the word I'm looking for? In like other world stuff going on, right? Uh, super. What what is it called when you know super like fantasy ghosts, ghosts and spirits and stuff like that and magic. I guess fantasy, fantasy, yeah. fantasy, a lot of very fantasy, supernatural type of stuff. That's adventure happening. fantasy. Adventure Should we call fantasy. that? But look at this. This is my first, my favorite part. She, when she jumps, oh, and then that when kind she of jumps, stuff. she jumps hard. Oh, she yeah. jumps hard, and then she's like using her magic. This this looks interesting to me. So this is a uh, we will be getting this on the Xbox as well. Let me see. Is this a timed exclusive? There is a lot of them that were timed, timed exclusive. Yeah. 
uh, this one is not. Oh, it is a timed exclusive. Yeah. So almost. So everything. usually probably a year, right? It's yeah, a I, sexy looking yeah, game. Yeah, I'd be curious yeah. what it is. So. Yeah. It does look. Cool I love how they video. started it. By the way, Square Enix knows how to do trailers. It started at like a '90s trailer in a world. In a world, <laughs> not, not her, her own. own. <laughs> Just re- yeah, like it's totally, a, totally is a, where resolve will be tested. <laughs> like they, they, they do, they do a good job. No, this game looks cool. <laughs> and who doesn't like a giant dog? Kevin Bacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom Cruise. Uh, Harrison that Ford is funny. So the one that was really interesting, the next one shown that was a third party that I didn't know was third party because it did have a very Sony PlayStation feel is right there. Stray. This game, you look like you're the only living fit. You play as a cat. I'd go figure how like how is how is that going to be mean, entertaining? But it looks interesting. Not? Everybody surrounds you is robots. And you look to be like the only living thing, and you're a cat. It looks fascinating. It's this, it's this futuristic, apop- apocalyptic type of game. But I have no idea what to expect because we didn't see gameplay. We just saw this trailer from it. Oh, well, we just saw a cat walking around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and which then is interesting. In the background, it says. But I won't play it if this is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> in the backgrounds, it says "Rip Humans," right? So. Yeah, and then so she, this is if I Robot one. This is if I Robot one. Yeah. Well, I almost wonder if it's because if you look at all the background, there's all the graffiti. I feel like the graffiti is telling us about the game, right? Okay. Like no escape, rip humans, right? That's true. The humans. Well, I are like dead. that they show like a barber shop right there, and it's just he's mixing with his bolts in his head. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, if Robots won, what a shitty world. Like, look at that place. We're yeah. probably well. What this Don't is robots probably make trash men. This is probably the Matrix, and all that electricity they're getting is from our bodies. Oh, you think the cat's really? jacked in? <laughs> yes. Cat the jacked cat. In. Oh, it could be. It could be the one. The one cat. <laughs> the one. Cat. Well, he's got a backpack on. So what? This is like going to be. You can't adventure without a backpack. <laughs> yeah. Duh. It's oh, it's probably a bag of holding. Uh, okay. Okay. You're right. Sorry. Real. <laughs> No, I wonder if it's going to be like uh, almost a uh, like a, a Plague Tale Innocence type of game where it's almost like an adventure puzzler. You know what like I mean? Like a point and click? N- no, but no, like, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, no, no, not like a point and click. You just picked I, up a half a pencil <laughs> and you picked up a staple. No, I, I think, you know how like in, in uh, Plague Tale Innocence... There, you start at the beginning of the level, and it's kind of like a puzzle. You got to hide behind this. You got to throw the thing. You yeah. know what I mean? It's almost like its own little adventure puzzle. I get the vibe that it's going to be kind of like that. You know what I mean? You're going to have to work your way through. Li- I mean, I have no idea what the story is going to be. You're playing a cat. Right? Chad is saying survive. They think it's survival survival horror. horror. Which? How do you do a survival horror when you're a cute little kitty? I regardless, <laughs> I think it's a super interesting yeah, concept. Know? Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, like you're just like oh oh. I mean that world does look uh, like terrible. Yeah, and you'll need to survive. But you're I, a well, I cat. Mean, that, I mean, there you go. Rip humans could have been uh, survival horror. No escape. Also a fear thing, right? Yeah. Now is that the? Is he buying cigarettes? What is he doing at that store? Uh, he's buying weed. As a robot, what do you need to buy? Um, oil. I know oh, for a fact you need oil. oil. Um, sometimes you get uh, you need WD forty. You know, just to stay loose. You know, to keep the squeaks out. <laughs> I guess that's what oil would do, too. But um, Lubricant? Definitely le- need some lubricant. All robots need lubricant. You need lubricant. Um, occasionally, you'll need... Sometimes your fans get dusty. Yeah. So you gotta blow them up. The, and you got to do it the safe way. Do you have to be over a certain age as a robot? Do you have have to have so many <laughs> updates before you can buy the air the air can like you I do in the real world? I am patch twenty a yeah. five five six yeah. two. I, I can I'm buy, legal. Buy the air can. Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, that's stray. Go look that one up. It's it's a very interesting new unique concept, which I think cool. And I think what the theme of a lot of the third party titles that were shown was this new. New look. So the next one is Oddworld, actually. Soulstorm. Oh. Um, I know what you guys are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I uh, spicy. Why don't you talk about this? Since I kind of lay it on me. I kind of stole a little bit of your thunder. No. To bring this so up early. I was not expecting this game to look as good as it did. Uh, it's so Oddworld is kind of a twisted, dark kind of. It's humorous, but it's also kind of a darker it's like game. Nihilist, nihilistic humor. Yeah. Um. 
I I think I played the what was the first Odd World? I played it when I was a kid on the PlayStation One. Yeah, that was when. So Odd World used to be a PlayStation exclusive. Now it's everywhere. Um, yeah, and then the, on the 360, didn't they come out with? I don't know. I can't remember. I played. I've played a couple Odd World games. Um, this one looks really good story wise. Uh, you you're looking at the like right now we're looking at the kind of the. I guess not gameplay aspect of this game, but then they start showing gameplay and yeah, it looks right there. Is this like two point five D world, but a lot's happening, a lot more action than I think traditional Odd World games have. It looks like uh, the cutscenes that they're showing peaks of look awesome. Yeah. Like this looks like a deep, dark, interesting story. And uh, there's that at the end part, he goes to cut. So this this character has his mouth like taped shut or sewn shut. At the end, he goes to cut it. Like there, there's yeah. some sort of inner turmoil that he's experiencing, and he's he's cutting loose or free or anything. Looks like a fascinating game. Right oh, here, you saw that, dude, right? So oh, so cool. So we're watching it live, but uh, it looks better than I was expecting. I agree. I think the pre-footage we saw was very janky and very pre-alpha. We're now starting to see the game a lot more finished, and it looks better than I was expecting. This, I, is, this was my favorite game that I saw. Here. I agree. Well, for third party, uh, it's not my favorite, but it's up there. And I think character, like this game has character. It has feeling, at least coming from this trailer. Uh, if you've ever played Oddworld, it's it. This yeah. is Odd World. Was this one timed or no? Uh, this Odd World timed here. Let me check. I don't think it up. would be. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it would be. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. It, it is timed. timed. It, they got yeah, a timed. Yeah, okay. Well. Oh, wow. yeah. Interesting. Well, it looks very good. Yeah, I'm excited to play this one. The uh, surprise hitter for me. Yeah. No, I agree. I think this was a pleasant surprise on this one. Jordan, what are your thoughts on Odd World? I like it. There right. you go. There yeah. we go. Straight no, I mean, the, really, uh, Mark summed it up. It looks really cool. It looks fun. Like you said, well, I mean, how did you describe it? It's a, it's a t- twisted, dark, yet has that kind of, it, it, it has it, charm. It, it has yeah, humor, there you go. But it's charm, dark. Yeah, yeah, a dark charm. <laughs> uh, next up is one that we've, we actually saw last E3, and that is Ghostwire Tokyo. That is coming. Uh, what I want to get our thoughts on Ghostwire. To- who publishes? Who does? Who's? Who does this game? Ghostwire Tokyo. Someone in chat. If you could let me know, I forget who does this game. Uh, Jordan, give me your thoughts and impressions on what what you saw from Ghostwire Tokyo. Well, David, <laughs> this is my kind of game. <laughs> Weird. Weird. And Japanese. And Japanese. So one of the although th- it is scary, I don't. I so it's hard for me to play scary. This is another games. one of those. I'm telling you, there's like a supernatural theme here. With yep. a lot of these well, remember this games. is this is the one. I, I mean, I'm already in because this is the one. If I remember correctly, where the 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 lady came out. Remember the yeah. the Asian lady, and she was so excited. She was hilarious. Is this like, Bethesda? She that got does me. Ghost she Fire got me pumped. I think it is Bethesda. I think it is, yeah. Bethesda, yeah, I think it is Bethesda. It was on the Bethesda stage. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they they publish it, and then her company develops it right. Yeah. But anyway, but no, this looks. So I'm not like super huge into scary games. Games. Some of the only like I I could play Resident Evil because I really like the story. I mean, even though it's really hard, you know, I think it's scary sometimes. I think this is going to be one of those games for me. It's going to be scary and hard for me to progress, but it looks so cool. I like the I, it just it looks cool. Well, it looks like a suspense yeah, thriller it really does. more than like a scary game to me. The only thing that I would say is at the very beginning. So this trailer launched and they said this. We're going to show you what we've been able to accomplish on the next generation of consoles, right? And then it shows, and I was like, um, like I expect to see more activity in the background. And it's like, it, it didn't feel next gen to me. I do like the first, I do like that first person magical I mean, power look. Have, have you ever fought uh, <laughs> a. A headless schoolgirl? <laughs> no, I never have. That then I'm turns into you. some kind of. I mean, monster? that's that's scary. That terrifies me. But to be honest. you kind of want because you feel like you shouldn't it. punch it. No, true. But at the same time, it's killing you. Yeah, I was just uh, well, I just think because the, the the developer uh, talked about we were really able to make Tokyo come to life with this, and then like all the scenes, Tokyo's not alive. It's dead. Like, <laughs> Tokyo's one of the most populated cities in the world. Well, I mean, there's nobody just, on the streets except for people goes, that only yeah. you can see. No, but I I think it looks interesting. Yeah, I, I I really do like it. But you know, this is just right up the my third alley, party though. showing. Uh, 
uh, is really strong for next generation. So, so by far. the way, yes. there was another game that I think was better than Odd World for me. And I, we, when we approach it, I'll tell you which oh, one it is. You oh. probably know what one it it's is. Probably the one that I'm thinking. Too. Okay, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's, 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 it looks, it looks. Fast. So I, well, I want to be clear. You know, Odd World looks really good, but there is some good hitters in this. So. Yeah, no, absolutely. Some heavy uh, hitters. Let's go to Godfall. This is a game that has been talked about for a while. We didn't see too much here. We got to see some action with Godfall. Jordan, this this strikes me as as your your really your type of game that you could jump into. Weird, and, and yeah. This is the weird uh, and kinky. That's yeah. Jordan. the uh, Gearbox game. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like it. <laughs> All right, there you go. Well, no. Not too well much. no, it's it's basically. Um, it, it, I think we've so talked are about we it running before. Lanes in this game because it looks like we're running lanes, or is is I don't know. I don't know too much about this game well, other than. We've seen a couple trailers here and there, right? I haven't looked too much into it though, but I, it almost reminds. Didn't didn't we when we talked about it before? Kind of compare it to, and maybe we didn't, but didn't we kind of compare it to like a Warframe type, yeah, type game, right? Because um, I mean, I don't know if it's multiplayer or not. I don't know much about it other than the trailers I've seen. Yeah, and but uh, I mean, the gameplay and the melee combat look smooth, which is important in a melee combat yeah. game, right? Like it looks really good. Yeah, so this game uh, is not coming to X- Xbox. It does say it's a timed exclu- timed exclusive on the console, so I don't think it's coming to the Xbox. Though I think it's just on PC. Little that's the little old man boy has. Well, so well. it's coming to Microsoft. So it's coming to Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. So it but it could be on Game Pass Ultimate. <laughs> 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 but it looks like lanes that we're running there. To me, it looks like an up ballsier smite, and that could be completely wrong. Yeah. But very cool. I mean. The the style of fighting, the armor and stuff. I mean, they really always show f- they always show three, so it's like a Destiny fire team type thing, right? You're in groups of three. Yeah. You go to the level, um, but uh, I I like it. Let's go to a really good one. This might be one of Mark's favorites as well. Hitman Three. Oh yeah, baby. that we got to see this one. This trailer when it was an, uh, announced or when they showed it off, they showed a trailer. Then the developer came back on and said, "Now let's look at let's look at." gameplay here and then it the gameplay was just another trailer <laughs> like, like we're really we're really this generation uh using the term gameplay loose and fast guys but well i mean hey, that's the way i like it yeah. maybe, <laughs> loose and fast maybe that's just uh i mean maybe that's just what the game plays like i don't know the, uh let me let me ask you this do you think this is going to be episodic like they that's, did see the that was one? that was my uh i don't know that was my wonder as well. Did you mind the episodic of... No, because I played it when it was already all out. So, so you didn't have to wait. <laughs> I didn't have to wait. Yeah, I wonder... Um, but I, with how the levels work in that game, I think it's okay to do episodic. Okay. Because each level is has so much replayability that you can spend tens of hours on a single level, mm-hmm. I feel. So... And Hitman, man. Agent, what is it? Agent 47? Dude, yeah. he's a badass. He is. Oh, oh it's good. It's a, it's, it's a good series. Uh, and I really enjoyed the last one. So yeah. if they do episodic, this is one of the few times where I think it might be okay just because of how Hitman, the lore, and how the mechanics work in the game. Because you can play the well, it's same incredibly levels. replayable w- yeah. very much so i do like for so for instance when they did they went back to the developer and they're like now let's take a look more into hitman right and it wasn't gameplay but what it was was it looked like a level in a place like dubai you're at the top of this the world's tallest skyscraper he's climbing up um that seems like a cool that what what hitman has always nailed is how do you accomplish? How do you kill the guy without getting caught? Right, like that. Look, the, yeah, here it is. Like up in this super high tower. I think it's a really cool. Place, yeah, it's a good. You know, to put, it's a really good game. game. Is it's, this one a timed exclusive? No, no, that one's this coming one everywhere. Right, hard yeah. third party. So that's that's Hitman. Yeah. One uh, one of the games that also oozed character for me, oozed. a pleasant surprise, was another third party game, The uh, Little Devil Inside. This game, I actually couldn't. Where either, to me, it seems like so. So if you've not seen the trailer, go watch the trailer of this. But it starts out, you're like this old man butler looking dude, and then it flashes from him back to this young kid, and back and forth, right, all yeah. the time. This trailer was interesting because I wasn't expecting the gameplay that you're seeing come out of this, right? Yeah, and it just looks fast. It looks very story oriented, 
It's like a a very bizarre version of Tara Croft with her butler. Yeah. Well, but is that Tara a butler or I mean Laura, Laura Croft? Croft. Yeah. Is, Laura. is that her sister? Is that, I don't know. Is that a butler? Yeah, or is Tara. That Tara. Like, I don't know why I said that. Is Laura that Croft. This guy as is, is is that this guy as an older <laughs> gentleman? Is he t- is he a writer that's telling a story and this is his imagination? Because remember, like Laura he, Croft, he falls. The character here falls into like a clip. Like look at here, you're riding penguins down a hill, and you're a donkey. The donkey cracks the, me up, man. The vibe that it gave me, and everybody will probably disagree with me, but it. It looked like a more action-packed Limbo. Yeah, no, I agree style with that. Game. Yeah. Or, or uh, what was the other one? There was Limbo and the other one. Um, See, I think, you know. I think he's a writer or something, and this is his imagination, right? Or his conscious or something. <laughs> oh, right? like, have you? Yeah, because when the, he when falls he, down the hole and the then falls, it flashes to him on the toilet, on the toilet <laughs> is hilarious. So I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but this game <laughs> had me Watch intrigued. It. Seeing this, this is it right here. This is so funny. Bloop. Yeah, right there. That's the part. Yeah, that's the part. And so that's where, like, is he a? Ri- I think he's a writer, and this is imagination, or this is. Ins- I I don't know. I don't know what. That it would is. make sense. Something like that. But it looks cool. It's fantastical. Um, it's got this like kind of claymation vibe to it. Not really very art, very artistic, very Pixar-ish. It looks cool, man. It looks really cool. Yeah. This this one this one was a pleasant pleasant surprise. For me, we obviously saw NBA K2K1. We'll skip that one. I hate the sport teasers because all they do is show real sports. They show <laughs> it's never it's never gameplay uh, at all. Look at the sweat this time. Let's get down to the sweat does look dynamic. Let's get, yeah, <laughs> let's get down sweat. to some of the big hitters here for third parties. Let's go Death Loop first. Now this game for me, I think, is the game of the show. Um, oh yeah, I can see third that third party. This, has all, no, this is Bethesda. Yeah, this is Bethesda. This is not new. This was at E3 last year uh, at their Bethesda show. But this, we got detail of what's happening. Very story. You are you are stuck in a resort, and everybody's trying to hunt you. And you are reliving every day. Everybody hunting you and killing you. And you've got to you've got to get out. You've got to escape. It looks the murderous Groundhog Day. It looks very Fallout ish. The 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 parkour mechanics, the gun mechanics, it looks cool. M- meanwhile, you have someone that's basically like in charge of the game, is my impression. The game she's, master. Yeah, the game master. That's yeah, totally what it is. She's in charge of keeping you in, in. So she's hunting you as well, as 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 well as all the, all the so, people who are paid to kill you. <laughs> I feel like this is a mix between We Happy Few and Mirror's Edge. Like, yeah. yeah, and with a little bit of this uh, dishonored, it has a dishonored. Yeah, with and a little dishonored, bit of dishonored in there. Dishonored. Yeah, well, is it from there. what is it? Arc something? Is yeah, it from them? The same, that do it? It's the same, same studio. That do yeah, because yeah, it feels dishonored. Yeah, yeah. It looks well, and at the end of the and trailer, you can do tracer stuff. You can play as the narrator too, so you can play as the opposite, where you're trying to hunt down this person. It oh, looked that's like cool. It looked like sh- she goes into the gameplay, and now you're playing as her yeah. hunting down. The, the person guy. who's in the loop as well, Arcane, right? That's their name, Arcane. Yeah, that's cool. That's that's this 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 to me is one of the games I'm I'm most excited yeah, for. No, this, this next generation. Uh, this next one that you're gonna talk about. Oh yeah, uh, we've for. got. Uh, we also got to see the next Resident Evil, oh, which talk, I didn't realize. I, I wasn't expecting it to be Resident I Evil. I didn't think it was Resident talk Evil. Talk dirty to me. And then it went R one one one, and I was like, "It's it's sorry, huh? it's, it's up one mark. You just passed it. Oh, I just uh, passed it. Sorry. Yeah, oh, come on, right there. Come on, I'll focus. Tell you guys, I was talking about the game. What I like is this. There looks like they're getting away a little bit from just zombies. This looks like vampires, werewolves, uh, traditional. Horror, like fairy tale, Brothers Grimm type of stuff that we're that we're doing here. Also, the the next gen graphics here. This looks like a next gen game. Like when the the old man comes out of the closet and you see his face and his impression. Oh, and he has a shotgun at your oh, face. Oh, yeah, so good. That's Dude, crazy. This, Resident Evil is a fantastic series. The the last one, Resident Evil, what was it? Seven, Seven. Biohazard. Yeah, at the mansion was or the- really good. And uh, looks like they're sticking with that first person, which I actually think. Is beneficial the yeah. way they're doing the like the way they're telling the story now because it was third person the entire series I'm pretty sure yeah. Yeah. for all the main the main games right but uh, no this is exciting I I'm really excited for Resident Evil yeah this... I think it's a great series and I think they're going in a really good direction uh, as of uh, Resident Evil 7. yeah I think it's a cool direction it starts out uh, with the, there's a voiceover of this lady sounds like writing to her kid like these brother Grimm's types of story and then it flashes to gameplay and 
Like right here. This is the scene right yeah. here. Everybody that's this watching is live. Scary. What I want to know is how'd he miss? He comes out right there. Look at that. Oh, it looks so good. The, I'm excited for this. What's going to be interesting is, I mean, since we'll, 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 uh, well, I guess we can watch it for a minute because it looks cool. What, what is going to be interesting? <laughs> well, because, uh, <laughs> so at this event the where this was shown, the PlayStation event, yeah. they didn't talk anything about VR. And Biohazard was Hands one of their VR, VR yeah. big VR ones, VR, right? Yeah. And this is obviously the same style, that do, first person. They I did wonder, do one VR game. I wonder if they're going to, you know... Do that with this. Do one? that with this if they it's going to be in VR. I wonder if they're going to come out with a new VR to to or if the old VR can upgrade. You know what I? I, yeah, I wonder I what they're going to do with it. I'm actually interested to see where they go with it. it doesn't but yes, matter to me. This game looks really this good on the Xbox, but looks really cool. How? What'd you feel about at the end? Chris showing up, dude. Oh right, yeah. Dude. Okay, first of all, <laughs> I think that's like become a tradition because that's actually. Can we talk about number seven? Uh, yeah, go ahead. So at the end of number seven, the game is over. You you do the big reveal. So is this a spoiler? Event. A little spoiler, yeah. A little spoiler? Minor spoiler. Minor. Minor spoiler, yeah. So the big event happens in the game, and you do it, and the after that big event happens, that concludes the story, you're, you're on the ground, and you look up, and some tricep buff man reaches his <laughs> hand down and says, hey, man, I got you, and it was Chris Redfield. And then, of course, you were able to play him in the DLCs and stuff like that. But I think it's a tradition that they're going to have awesome characters come at the end of all their well, games. And he's gone rogue, man. He's, uh, gone he's rogue. like, hey, I'm Chris. Speaking of Resident Evil. You've seen my sister. My wife and I this week started playing Resident Evil 2. Oh, nice. Yeah, and Would I know you, that we've uh, talked go about Claire this. Or Leon. Wait, which, which, the old one? like The remastered. The remastered, okay. Uh, has the same feel for me. They did such a good job. It's excellent. excellent. I'm blown yeah. away. Uh, also, the way they're doing remakes now is awesome. Also, you forget how like it's a good game. You forget how much how much you you, you need to, to find bullets yeah. in that game. Yeah, and the puzzles in that and game. And how it's, terrible architects were in that city? And how <laughs> beefy zombies were? I got to shoot them shoot them three or four times in the head and they still come back. What the heck? Yeah, I know. Have that you gotten is to the li- have you gotten to the liquors? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. No, no, not yet. Just wait. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> but, Did you play Leon or Claire first? Uh, Claire, because my wife wanted to play Claire. I don't mind playing Claire either. She's nice to look at. But What costume did you pick? Uh, with jeans. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. Very traditional. Very she has like a race car costume that a lot yeah. of people are using nowadays. No, it's going <laughs> jeans. Going all jeans, baby. Uh, <laughs> Their schoolgirl outfit? That I, yeah. <laughs> no, I would really like... So I think, I mean, I think Resident Evil has really good characters. You have Claire, Leon, Jill, uh, Chris, right? It would be really cool to see them come back. I mean, obviously, we have Chris in this one. I think it'd be really cool to see, like, Leon come back. Even Jill. Jill Valentine is a really good character as well. Um, I like the, but the, it, it's I like the that was direction on this one. That though. was like a this. really cool intro for Chris when he walks yeah. up and he says, one second. <laughs> bah, 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 bah. And he didn't just shoot him. But I, do, do you, he shot him three times in the forehead. They must be on hard mode because <laughs> they have to... But do you guys like the change in direction on this too? This more like fairy tale, uh, Brothers Grimm type, you know, zombies, werewolves. Not zombies, sorry. Uh, vampires. Those are clearly vampires, right? Vampires, werewolves, stuff like that. I wonder what type of virus it is. Yeah, yeah. There's obviously going to be a virus. The Twilight virus. Or though, is the there going to be a virus? virus? We don't see anything that it says that there's a virus. There's always a virus. Man. Yeah, it's true. There's, there's a, a virus. werewolf right there. G virus, T virus. Mm-hmm. Do you guys like that direction? Elemental though, P for... virus. Elemental P. Do you guys agree? Do you guys like that direction? No, I like it. It's cool. Village, and I actually like this part right here. Ready? Well, ready? I was Boom! E- yeah, I know. I was not expecting it to be a Resident <gasps> Evil game. Resident yeah. That was Evil a really cool reveal. Eight. Yeah, yeah that really was. Uh, I like that was such a good next player. game, and this is a big one. This is a big, again, third-party titles, I think, oh, were the story of this. Just to make sure, I, I believe, but Resident Evil is not timed. No. It's an everyday. Yeah, that, 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 if that one was timed, it yeah. would have hit me in the heart. Uh, Pragmata. Now this, when when I first watched this, I thought, oh, another Death Stranding? Is this another? Is this guy delivering something? This one isn't this weird thing? enough to be that one. And then I was like, oh, or is this Division? Because it had some Division mechanics. Here. I got some Bioshock yeah, kinda, vibes, kind of like yeah. an Interstellar with like DLC li- with the little girl and the big old baddie. Yeah. Now this is straight third party as well, not timed either. Um, but uh, this is very interesting. And this girl is... U.S. Co- parcel service right there. <laughs> yeah, he's a mailman. <laughs> it's yeah. the postman. That's <laughs> Kevin Costner. So, yeah. he- <laughs> <laughs> so if you've not seen Pragmata, the trailer, go look it up. See, this is where I thought, okay, Division? Like, is this futuristic Division that we're getting? A new Division? But no, this is an entirely new 
third party game, Pragmata. She's clearly a robot, right? Well, I, I mean, know. that's that's very, you know. She could right. be a spirit. Yeah. You know? Oh, okay. Or she, she just could be going through a rough time in her life. Yeah. Or the fifth element. She could be. Fifth Maybe element. that's I mean, Bruce Willis. Although, wait. I mean, obviously that cat. Well, because the thing is, is she get they get sucked up into space, right? Like. Yeah, but the fifth element can't die, can she? I guess she could. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Who knows what she is? She could be a mis- she could be like a symbiote like venom from space and she mm-hmm. can just survive mm-hmm. anything. Yeah. And that's the form she chose to appear as. Yeah. Well, maybe Perhaps. it's venom. Uh Spicy, let's have you talk just about Pragmata real quick. What did you think of this overall? Uh I mean, it's a r- Here's the deal with some of these Japanese trailers. You have no idea what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The story is <laughs> It piques your curiosity because it's so different. Who makes this game? Um, let me look. I actually don't know. I, I'm sure we'll see at the end here. I mean, I don't know what to expect. I never know what to expect with these Japanese trailer games. It's kind of the... Like, did you see how, like, Capcom. it was glass, Sorry, that's, that's like the shattering? Look, I'm going to rewind this trailer. Like, see the shattering glass and stuff? It's almost yeah. as if they're in a like, simulated world. Correct. You know like, I mean? they just broke out of the paradigms, whatever program that they were in. I don't know. I think it's going to be... You guys remember that movie, Interstellar? You think it's I think it's going to be kind of a weird interstellar, time is relevant I think someone thing. over at Capcom saw... Uh, you know, it's, it's sad that Hideo Kojima is going to movies and wanted to do Death Stranding 2. So they called it Pragmata. They said they would meet me here. Do I leave a note? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't see any umbilical cords anywhere. Come, this one, come this to one, post office. This one looks super interesting, though. If you've not seen it, go check out that uh, the trailer this for is, for I'm, Pragmata. It's it's an it's a just weird trailer that piques your interest. That's what they're good at, and that's Japanese. Yeah, like I I have no idea what to expect from this game. So to answer your question, David, I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, and that basically Maybe it's cool. that basically does it for uh, for the third party titles that were discussed at. During the PlayStation event, very I th- cool. I think it's it's exciting. We're we're next generation, everybody. We are next generation. Excited to. Uh, well, we didn't talk about like the main first thirty minutes of uh, Grand Theft Auto Five. Oh, that's right, Grand <laughs> Theft Auto Five. Because that is there. that's not a timed exclusive. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that that shows <laughs> they, you the power. This will be three gener. Imagine a game that launched at the end of the PlayStation Three and Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty on stage for. The PlayStation 5. It was like the first 20 minutes. It kept going. And yeah. you're like... It, and it was, was just <laughs> to say that we're here. We're here. Grand, Grand Theft Auto will be on the PlayStation 5. Upgraded. Yeah. Graphically upgraded and stuff. But what kind of powerhouse does Grand Theft Auto Online have? It's it's huge, man. Good for them. I mean, good for PlayStation. Yeah. Rockstar, man. Can I also say that I found the... I think this is a cultural thing. I just don't understand it. All the bumpers or the transitions or whatever that they would do in between each trailer that would just show like the X. Oh yeah. Up here for ten seconds and then wink. There's it, a lot of X's. It reminds I think yeah. it's because of the button, right? Yeah, the yeah. button. And the circle and it reminded it, it must have been the same company that did like the presentation as the one that did the jazz band one where the it shows the guy with the trumpet go or, yeah. <laughs> or the drum. Bunk. It yeah. goes to there and then goes back and then it shows the audience like what the hell? <laughs> like I don't I don't get the transitions and all that. I mean you could have uh, had that be that's it, their trailer all in their twenty own. minutes a lot less time without those. <laughs> yeah, I saw. Uh, I don't get that. I think that's a cultural thing, right? Or I don't know why it's, they would uh, artistic maybe. Oh, okay. Uh, someone in chat is mentioning uh, Kenya Kenna Bridge of the Spirits, which was shown. That is a timed exclusive. Want to take a look at it? Um, this one looked good. This one was like had this like Zelda vibe to it. Uh, the Z-Man looked Zelda. really good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this one. This one. Uh, let me skip ahead a little bit. So Boink. it will be coming to Xbox most likely, right? I don't know. I don't know much. I didn't look into this one that much. Uh, it looks great. It looks like a really fun. Uh, it's like a Zelda style. Yeah. Game. It's so like, so Ubisoft is working on one too. So. Uh, it looks yeah. There's is that um, if Zelda was Neo, that's yeah. what this game would be. If Zelda was Neo, <laughs> <laughs> I, I get that. 
I can you know, see you, if Zelda was Neo. Ubi, Ubisoft in the is, woods. Yeah, if Zelda was Neo in the woods. <laughs> Ubisoft is working on that uh, like Roman style one or Greek style one. Remember? Yeah, yeah. that one. Yeah, that one looked. Which also looks cool. cool. Uh, so there you go, guys. That is uh, that is next generation. It is here. It is coming. Very excited. Excited to see what Xbox has. I really don't think the bar has been set high. Um, so it's going to be interesting what Microsoft has to show off over the next couple months. With this yeah, this and month this and evolves. especially next month, right? Well, yeah. yeah, it'll be fascinating. And that brings us to the next segment of our show. Was that this one? Or did we this one. This okay. is the there news, it is. Baby. I pressed the right button. Uh, Jordan, tell us what is happening in the world that is Xbox One. Actually, before we get into the the first news story, Warface. I really want to talk about is yeah. Warface. Warface Breakout is getting a season one. Now, we're all playing Warface Breakout. Super fun. Uh, so let's just review real quick what is coming in season one. It's coming June 18th. Ooh, uh, dirty. Ranked mode is coming. There's gonna They have ladders. There's going to be three versions to their ladder mode um, that they bring in. Season will be free for everyone to participate. Seasonal progression will be available for everyone. There is no battle pass. Uh, thank God. I'm kind of battle passed out. I'm what uh, what game are we talking about? Warface. Warface. Breakout. Warf- oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, there will be DLC, cosmetic DLC that you can purchase if you so choose. There's also going to be a lot of progression awards that you well, can aren't get. Well, aren't they? So they say they too. say no battle pass. Yeah, but essentially they're going to have a progression system that is, in fact, a battle pass. A, their version. Yeah, but of it's a free. Everybody has. Well, access yeah, yeah, to that's, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I mean, the battle pass is still technically free on the others. You can just get like the upgraded version of the. Yeah, battle this pass. one they yeah. won't have a free and a premium. No. They'll just have the premium. Yeah, essentially, and then they'll have right? a separate yeah. store where you can buy where you can stuff purchase. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Including a knife, and they were really, they were really. Well, because CS:GO knives were a big deal. They would sell for hundreds and hundreds. Oh, of dollars. really? Okay, so yeah, their knives are rare in CS:GO. Uh, so the season will last approximately ninety days. There will be four seasons a year. So in twenty twenty, there's going to be three seasons. This it's like year. the real seasons. Each season will include new features, quality of life changes, and a lot of new cosmetic items obtainable via seasonal progression. Each season will include three ranked ladders with unique rewards obtainable only during this season in ranked matches. And seasons will also feature DLC cosmetic items. So let's just let's review the ranked matches because that's, I think, the most important part of the season. Uh, it, it's going to be hardcore mode. It essentially replaces hardcore yeah. mode, right? Yeah. Uh, the main feature of season one is the introduction of ranked matches. They will replace the current hardcore matches and will be played according to hardcore rules. You will finally... You will be able to compete against each other to see who is the best in Warp Face Breakout. The ranked ladder will be updated every month, and there will be three separate stages, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, with separate rankings during each stage. So to claim the top of the ladder, you'll need to show your skills in all three stages of ranked matches. Once the season is over, you will be able to browse your results in the season's menu. Very nice. So So you can't browse your results beforehand? Um, I, I think I think what they're saying is afterwards, it just stays there like a like history. in Call of Duty. Like you can go back and say, "Oh, in season one, I did this." Like they do that yeah. in Overwatch too. Yeah. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So and I think that's the biggest thing. Season one. I mean, this game is built for competitive, seasons. and it's coming up very coming soon, June eighteenth. Yeah, it is coming. So not I'm very too far away. It. So Warface, there you go. Warface and Breakout. it'll they've been they've been uh, updating the game pretty well, from what I hear. Yeah, the up so. the updates the update. Did a pretty decent job. I've been playing. And it all obviously, week. this one will have another update with it as well, which will yeah. hopefully, you know, solve some of the uh, the the issues that are going on. But the game is really fun. I'm yeah. excited for it. Next up, <sighs> next up, Destiny had Ooh, a little a event this week. One, Destiny one, Two. They basically they basically just talked about their feet, their future of Destiny, their and feet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and essentially what they wanted to do. Basically, they want to have destiny be like a live service type game which it already is you know but they want you know li- like a like a mmo right like a world of warcraft where you every so many years or whatever you get an expansion you get patches stuff like that so they talked about uh their seasons going forward which they just uh launched their new season i believe it's season 11 okay which just is, is available now for everybody uh i think it brings a whole new dungeon uh or strike sorry and then obviously the usual seasonal rewards as well but the big news is they talked about their next three expansions. Yeah. So number one is going to be coming in 2020. Uh, it's called Beyond Light, uh, which okay. will be coming just at the end of the year. And they did show a little trailer to it. We are going to Europa. 
Europa, uh, which will be really cool. <laughs> uh, and a very interesting character has returned because this character Just was can't stay away. Yeah, and it. Uh, let me see if you guys can guess what character it is. If you've not uh, seen the trailer yet, it is the character that was very fascinating. And yet had nothing to do with the story yeah. at all. Yeah. I mean, I saw the trailer, yeah. so I'll leave it to Mark. But that's actually a really good one. There Very fascinating character. One of the most several characters. Actually, you're right. There are several that, well, characters. Okay, Big Destiny 1. Big Destiny 1. Destiny 1. And well, you're like, okay, this is like, okay. okay. And then Very. they go nowhere with... And then she oh, disappears and gives you a the subpar. Prophet, and prophetess gives you a sub- that gives you a rifle that sucks. Yeah, yeah. Right. The stranger. Well, she's like super badass. Then you never see her. And again. she's like, "Here's my rifle." Oh, things are gonna really work out for us. <laughs> yeah. Peace out. Uh, she gives you her rifle and like took the firing pin. And the rifle it was t- sucks. That was terrible. It's a terrible rifle. Anyway, the stranger is back. She had called Eris and the Drifter over to Europa. And I mean, I'm not. I don't know the the full lore, but in the trailer, that's what it shows. Uh, they're there. Stuff is going down. They found another big triangle ship. The darkness, you know? Yeah. Big triangle stuff. Uh, super interesting. So hopefully the stranger, maybe we'll uh, get to learn a little bit more about her, uh, see what she's been doing, so what the, she's been up to, and maybe hopefully she got better weapons this time. The triangle ship is the, is the darkness. The square ship is the Borg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So eventually we'll probably have the Borg show up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or an octagon ship, you know. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. uh, the next one, I just like the title of it, uh, and I like where they're going with it too. The next one, coming in 2021, will be called the Witch Queen. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Witch Queen, I believe, is Oryx's sister. Yeah, uh, is what they were sharing in the thing, which. I still to this day, I'm going to say it, still to this day, I Taken think King. Taken King is the best expansion they came Fabulous. out with. I think it's one of my favorite raids. Um, I just think it's, I think, I think it's good. I think that's how a story should be told in these types of games, and I appreciate what they did. Agreed. So uh, this will be interesting to get back into the Oryx storyline, or at least, you know, about his family. I d- that, yeah, kinda, yeah, that family's had a rough go. They mm-hmm. have. Yeah, you had uh, the first guy, his son, right, Crota. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then well, Oryx. When, when you and his at, raid sucked. When, when you look at the when you look at the lore, like they're kind of fighting for their people. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're, and then they're just trying and, to and fight and oppression, com- and then we're coming in and killing them. Right? <laughs> Who is it? The He's worm? basically Bowser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is. And yeah. Mario goes in and kills all his turtle <laughs> folk. <laughs> And he, you know? he comes to our universe and is like, you killed my son. And we're like, yeah. no, we didn't. Baby Bowser. Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't. What are you talking about? And then the last one to wrap this all up in 2022 will be called Destiny Lightfall, mm. which is uh, it's, it's interesting. interesting. It's interesting that there was no Destiny 3 talked about, that it's going to be this perpetual game, kind of their vision all along that they're finally implementing. Yeah, which is what they um, wanted to do. Yeah, I actually down, re-downloaded Destiny 2 this mm-hmm, week. Mm-hmm. I was scheduled to play it last night with a friend. To g- I, this made me want to get back into it, and it just took too long for him to download, so, yeah. so we did ended up playing it. But th- one of the things that I really liked is they addressed in, in their reveal this week that uh, they lost a lot of casual players with, with you know the fear of missing out, the constant grind, stuff like that. So they're addressing how to keep the casual players moving to a more RPG system, doubling down on that RPG system mm-hmm. as a way to do that. Um, and so I'm very excited to see where that goes because that's – it has this overwhelming feel for someone like me being away, wanting to come back. What prevents me from coming back is, well, you're I'm, behind. I'm not ever going to be able to compete with like a black yeah. knight in our community, right? Who plays who's, yeah. who's the clan leader for the X One Bros clan. We do have a clan, guys. Come join it, Discord. Uh, mm-hmm. People are, that are playing it every week, even though the community is great and and people can help me get caught up. It's just. So, anyways, Destiny addressing that and and making it more casual, player friendly to keep up, I think is a good thing. It's, the balance is going to be maintaining it for your hardcore. Yeah, it's a hard balance, well. yeah. right? You know. But anyway, um, also uh, we already talked the uh, season of arrivals, arrivals, which is the season eleven, uh, which which is launched now, available now. They also did talk about one thing that did make a few waves. Boom. They talked about well, they 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 called it vaulting content. Yeah, uh, is what they talked about. But basically, what this does is they were saying that the game is really big, and it's. I think they they talked about you know they're upwards, you know they, they're at a ton of gigs on PlayStation, Xbox, right? It's just a big game. So what they're talking about doing 
is they're going to look at their statistics, and I think they've already announced what they're doing, and I can see why some people are upset, but uh, they're basically content that's not current or not really being played. They're going to take out of the game. They're going to vault it is what they said, uh, which makes you lead you to believe like, oh, it'll come back or whatever. But they're going to vault it and basically make it so the current content is kind of your main content. There's like a yeah. main like when you log into Destiny, you're like, oh, I follow this path. You yeah, know And I, I think mean? that's part of what helping casual players get back into it. Right. Because part of what's overwhelming is if I jump back mm-hmm. in. Where do I start? Now I have a clear directive on where to start and where to go. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this decision. I I, I feel like I get both arguments. Um, as a developer, yeah, you have a lot of stuff in the game. Um, it's a really big game. I mean, I get it. Cosmo Drone is back. What? Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. In in the vaulting, they're also gonna upgrade Destiny One content yeah. and bring it back, like the Cosmodrome, which yeah. is what David said. So, it's so not, that part's cool, yeah. right? I don't. This is what I would like to see them to do, and this yeah. is just my opinion. I, I'm not mad at them for doing this because I, I get why they're doing it, right? But what I would like to see them do is just what they should do is in Destiny Two. They should. I. It's it. It's kind of hard to do because of the way the story goes, but. It would be cool if they brought all the Destiny 1 content into Destiny 2, like they're doing with the Cosmodrome and stuff like yeah. that, and have all these locations. I think the one of the coolest things about a game like World of Warcraft is, yeah, I don't really have a purpose or need to go to Strangothorn Vale anymore, but it's a part of the world, and it's there. You know what I mean? It makes the world feel... So yeah, yeah, it makes the world feel like a world. You know what I mean? Whereas taking out, I think the Destiny... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I saw they're taking out the Destiny 2 base campaign. That's going to be gone. Mm. Um, I don't they're know. taking out certain planets and stuff like that. I, I I think that almost breaks the world building, in my opinion. But that's just, I mean, it's not obviously game ending or anything like that. I just, it, for me, it's more of the world building, right? Yeah. You know? It's going to be interesting. Yeah. Regardless, there we go. Black Knight says everything with the Leviathan uh, is being taken out. Yeah, the raid and everything like that, yeah. too. Um. It's just interesting. I, regardless, it did get me excited. They do such yeah, a good no. job of presenting. No, it's really always. cool. Um, so I did, and I so I did re-download it. Now it's just a matter of it's just a jumping into play now. <laughs> so. uh, anyway, also this week, uh, speaking of MMO games, Elder Scrolls Online got its new update, Graymore. Graymore, baby, venture which means we're in, back. Yeah, venture into the dark heart of Skyrim, Skyrim. and just uh, just tear it up. It's up. To, it's live on all platforms now. It did come to PC a little bit early, uh, a week and a half ago, but it is now available on console. It's there to go. It is their new big. They call them chapters, but it's essentially their their expansion update for this year. Um, it is paid. You do have to pay for it. Um, I don't even if you have EO, ESO Plus, which comes with all like the DLC content. You do not get the new chapters, so you do. It is a stand, you know. It is a purchase, right? But we're going back to the dark heart of Skyrim. It's heavily focused on vampires, oh. And, and oh, it looks cool. It looks dark. Let me ask you this, George the Man: Will you be jumping in? Yes, this week. And the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to Solitude. Oh yes, you remember Solitude from Skyrim? Oh, I do. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Empire and all that stuff. That's where I'm going. I, I'm gonna see. Yeah. Was it the Empire in Solitude? Yeah, it's the Empire. Oh, right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going there. I'm going to see what it's like. Very I'm good. excited to jump into it. should be a good time. So Yeah. Uh, Modern Warfare Season 4. Yeah. Has, has now, dropped. speaking of games that could care less how much... <laughs> how much... Uh, Content. How much uh, room they take up on your hard drive. Call oh, of Duty yeah. 4. It's like, a, it's like, what, 180 gigs now? It's well, you know, I appre- enormous. I, hey, I appreciate it. The dealer says, hey, you want to play our game? You're playing the whole thing. <laughs> they don't care. Anyway, you want to play our game? Uh, we don't want you to have any other games. <laughs> yeah, you want to play, play our game? You got it, It's a business a, decision. Yeah, they, they just have these blocks of code that are like twenty gigs. It's each. really nothing. <laughs> just it's to just make it so there. you can't have it's other. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we want to own uh, our business model, guys. Hear us out in a board meeting. Hear us out, guys. This is our business model. We make the game so big. <laughs> they have to uninstall. We make thing. people have. <laughs> they have to decide what's on their hard drive. Uh, Sounds great. Let's do it. Let's do it and make it so one download they hit their data cap yeah. immediately, right, yeah. <laughs> so they will never uninstall it. Yeah. Uh, we we got to we got to force people to make these hard decisions. <laughs> so Call of Duty Brilliant. Season Four has released. It's here. The Modern Warfare section. So just the 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 main multiplayer. It's got three new multiplayer apps. Multiplayer maps. Multi-mayor. Mr. John Mayer. It's got uh, Zokov Scrapyard. 
uh, Barricad Promenade, and mm. Trench. Uh, there's new modes coming with those maps. I actually like these new modes. One in the chamber, which is like it says, one in the chamber. Yeah. One in the chamber. What, what do you do? What do you need? What else do you need? Uh, uh, and then well, that was uh, those were on Black Ops. I remember not, one in the chamber. Yeah. I love that game. I mode. actually really like how Modern Warfare cycles in these playlists. Yeah. I think they do a good job, and I think they do it smart because what they do is, and as m- much people will get mad, they take away some playlists and they put new ones in. And what that does, because if you have a list of twenty playlists, obviously you fragment your community across all those playlists, right? So I I actually think the way they're doing it is really good. And it's really well done. I actually think they're doing a really good job with this game. So, yeah. anyway, you got uh, one in the chamber, uh, and you have all or nothing. And I believe all or nothing is pistols and knives. I like that. So actually, uh, I don't know when we did our community play um, in my group, we actually did a shield and knife match, and it was hilarious. So I think they actually got that idea from us. Yeah, they totally yeah, stole they, it. They bust have. It was a gr- <laughs> it was a great match. Anyway, and then you have a. Uh, uh, team Defender, which is basically Capture the Flag. So that's the main multiplayer mode. And now, jumping into Warzone, what everybody wants to know about. Warzone! Dude, they're doing such a good job with this. Yeah, it's got two new modes. It has This one's going to be funny. It's got a new mode. So there's still Warzone, right? But then it's got two new modes to kind of, you know, mix things up and all that fun stuff. There's one called Jailbreak. And what this will do, and I actually want to jump in and try it, try this out. It ran at r- randomly. So, I mean, I don't know if there's intervals or how it does it. But randomly... Anybody who's in the gulag, it doesn't matter if you're competing or spectating, is automatically released back into the game. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, so what? It's yeah. How is the game going to end? I don't know. Uh, they just, they're just throwing stuff. They're just trying it out. Not like, hey, only do they want you to not have any other games on your console, they never want the game you're currently in it to, to end. end. <laughs> <laughs> no, obviously it's it's, it's not going to be the you know it's not it's the, been main. the final ten for a long time. Yeah, it's going to be exciting to see like that. Uh, I think that's actually really cool. Well, why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, and it's not. Of course, it's not replacing the main game mode. It's just a mode that they're trying Testing out. You know out, what I mean? Yeah. It's, but it's it's. Can you imagine like you're sitting there and you just see like oh my gosh why is there like 50 people running down that hill? I just <laughs> killed those <laughs> people. But they have no gear. Yeah, they're all running. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's some funny. Uh, and then they have another mode called Fire Sale, which basically heavily discounts anything at the buy stations. So, And actually, this one, I think they're doing kind of like how Apex does their modes. I think they're doing this to test things out. I that, think so, too. The other mode, I think that's just like a fun thing to do. Um, this mode, specifically the Fire Sale, I think they're trying to figure out a sweet spot for cash. Yeah. Because they've I raised agree. the cash a lot. Uh, in, in the past uh, little while. Uh, also, we have new supply choppers uh, that you can find on the map. Uh, they don't have any weapons or anything like that because vehicles don't have weapons, but this one will be a little bit tougher to kill. So it's got a little bit more armor than the uh, little bird there. So, and then... Um, this is crazy cool. It's not talking of Call of Duty. Yeah. Moving on from Call of Duty. A I, leak. There was a leak. Uh, moving on to, to now EA. There's a leak, uh, a new Star Wars game. It's called Star Wars Squadrons. Squadrons. Um, it was accidentally shown on the Xbox store. This is, I think, either the second or third time that this has happened in like the past month. Either they're doing this on purpose because there's like they want to, you know, control the leak. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. or someone is really bad at their job. Re- <laughs> I, I bet you, I, I bet you, I would guess it's the former, right? Like, yeah. Well, that's why I was like, this just happened because it happened with same thing on the Xbox store. It happened with um, that game that I'm really excited for, Kingdoms uh, of Amular, yeah. Re Reckoning. Yeah. It was an accidental leak, right? Yeah. Um, I actually think I have a conspiracy theory that accidental leaks are actually never purposely, accidental. yeah, are actually yeah. purposely leaked, right? Mm-hmm. Oh shoot, who did that? Oh no, darn it, oh, yeah. Oh no, oh, no. journalists, <laughs> how did that leak? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, that's basically what happened. But so here's why I'm excited for Squadrons. Okay, my favorite yeah. Star Wars games in the past, Nintendo 64 and up, all revolve around flying their craft in game. Yeah, a game completely dedicated to this. What was it? was it Rebel X Wing that the? Well, I mean, you had the Star Wars game where it was all about pod racing. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. I think it was called Pod Racer. <laughs> I actually really liked that game. I thought that was a great no, racing yeah. game. What was the, what was the one where I just like level two was in the snow, and you you had to shoot the 
You had to shoot the, the legs. You had to shoot the bad guys? No, you had to shoot the legs out and take down the... Hoth. Eighth. That's the Battle of Hoth. Yeah, Battle of Hoth. I had a little But thing. what was the game? It was on the Nintendo 64. It was 64. on the Nintendo 64. No, that was a launch title. I know what game you're talking yeah. about. And that's it was like different... Games yeah, it was, ever. you did a bunch of different levels. I yeah. loved that game. that game. Super Rogue Commander, X-Wing in the TIE Fighter series. Dude, so fun. All of Star Wars, flight games... Nail it. So I'm really excited. Yeah, very for, cool. For so this one. EA has officially confirmed Star Wars Squadron. So the leak was real, right? But anyway. Is this Respawn working on this? Who's working on this one? I don't know. Oh, uh, it's published by EA, though. But anyway, EA has officially confirmed Star Wars Squadron uh, following the initial leaks. And a full reveal is coming Monday, June 15th at 8 a.m. Pacific time. That is two days from today. Ooh. So we will definitely be talking about it next week. Ooh. Uh, and we'll uh, give you our we'll, thoughts. Uh, give you our, yeah, we'll give you our How thoughts. How excited we but, are. Uh, I'll tell you right now. I'm really excited. These games do a good job. Star Wars is a great universe to have these types of games. They, I mean, look at look at um, Bat- Battlefront Two. Some of the funnest times is the is the flight section, the flight battles. Yeah, especially in when that you game. get Kylo Ren ship. Yeah, yeah the, the big long wiener ship, the red wiener that can cloak <laughs> yeah. and regen, so you never die. Yeah, dude. it's great. So ex- he's, I mean, he's packing. So excited. <laughs> and that brings us to the last segment of our show. This is the segment where we take your questions. To submit a question, you can do so each and every single week over on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash positive gaming or x1bros.com forward slash support. We are we're running a little long today, so we're we're gonna do t- t- one or two questions here. Let's do the psychotics first. Psychotic Psycho. says, uh, hey guys, I'm a, I'm in a bit of a pickle. Ooh. Ooh. I do like pickles, by the way. I'm pickles are the what's your favorite pickle? Uh, I don't. I don't. Movie know, theater. I pickles. just like the really big, <laughs> yeah. the ones that come in the bag. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making sure bag, you're zoomed like... in for this. <laughs> Show me. Really big. <laughs> All right. Really big, ice cold, crunchy pickles. Yeah. yeah. Pickles. Yeah. So me. Nothing beats on a hot summer day. I like day. the little, the, the little the dill pickles, little, the chips, and it's that guy on the front of the the thing. He's like the. Duck guy, not the duck is guy. It He's like, is it Velastic? Is that what it is? Yes, at his crunchy deals. So I, I like, I like the little ones, the little pickles <laughs> yeah. that are crunchy. Wait, can we zoom in on your? Uh, oh, I did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Little, I did. I pulled right it there, up. Yeah. yeah, we're crunchy. Little, uh, crunchy. Uh, yeah. Jordan, are you about uh, average? I think he's a yeah. chip. I think he's a pickle chip. I like guy. the yeah, chips. He's right like in between. He's the average yeah. kind. Yeah. Yeah. Chips. <laughs> How do you eat the pickle, Jordan? Anyway, psychotic <laughs> says I'm in a bit. Uh, Psychotic says I'm in a bit of a pickle when he's it comes a stork. to yes, yes. Sorry, when, sorry. When it comes to gaming, I often find myself getting sidetracked from one game because of a new game. <laughs> That's the story of my life. Yeah. It just happened recently with Minecraft Dungeons. My question is, how do you get over being distracted from the shiny new toy so you can finish the job you've started? Keep up the great work. That is a great question. That's my. I'm a shiny new shiny toy guy, all yeah. the time. Uh, what I find has worked recently is I've dove in deep. To certain games, and then I have like so I have Vigor War Warface at the moment, right? Yeah, and then other games like Minecraft Dungeons, I'll check it out. But I'm those are my two main games. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm probably not the guy to get advice from because I I'm like you, psychotic Jordan. What yeah. is your advice? I don't know, man. It's really hard. So like I'm so Minecraft Dungeons, I'm having fun with that. But then you you know I'm Warface. Yakuza yeah, right now zero. I played Ooh. Warface is kind of my <laughs> multiplayer game because I'm really enjoying it, especially with the new patches. <laughs> Yakuza. Yakuza that game is like one of the greatest things that's ever. <laughs> well, can we pause it? Because we talked about it last week, and I don't <laughs> yeah, think Spicy yeah, yet you to jump it? in. Yeah, I want to hear your I thoughts. Hear your... Wait, let's finish the advice, and then we'll okay, go yeah, to yeah, Spicy's yeah. Yakuza. So thoughts. Yakuza is is a really fantastic game, and I think that's going to be kind of my single player game for the month, and I want to try and beat it before the month. But what? But then I have a game like Escape from Tarkov, and this is where games get me. Is I feel like if I'm not playing that game, yeah. I'm falling behind. Like a Destiny, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, a, like yeah, yeah, like a yeah. Destiny, or or like it's just. When games do that, it's really hard because the shiny new toy co- like I'm almost in the opposite. The shiny new co- toy comes out and you're like, yeah, I want to play. You know, in this instance, like Yakuza, even though it's been out for a little while, right? Mm-hmm. Like I want to play this game; it's fantastic. But I keep being pulled back to these other games like Tarkov or Warzone. Even with Warzone, I feel like if I'm not playing, I'm not getting better. And if I'm not getting better, when it comes to ranked, I'm gonna bring down the team. Yeah, you know what I mean. And <laughs> you don't want to be that guy. I know. Yeah. Well, especially like Tarkov. They just wiped. Yeah. So that's you're, like, you're like everyone's hard, on right? the same yeah, playing so. field. That game promotes being 
it gr- the grind. If mm-hmm. you have better gear, you have a way huge advantage. It's not a balanced playing field. What the I, world is tough in that world. What I tried doing once is I tried doing like, okay, Monday is Tarkov. Tuesday is... It's too hard. you yeah. got to be a little more flexible. Tuesday is Warzone. Yeah, too, too hard. So what I do now is if I have a single player on the list, I just... I, I try and beat it as quick as I can, right? And I know yeah. that may not, like, I want to enjoy You can still enjoy the game, but I try, like, Yakuza. I'm just going to take time every day, even if it's only an hour or two, and just play two or three hours, and then jump over to Warzone and Tarkov. You know what I mean? Like, you just... Yeah. I think that sounded hard. nice. Uh, Slickdor in chat says, Game Pass has made this issue significantly worse for him, and I agree. Incredibly. Game Pass is is not <laughs> good. It's like, that. That's that great. And Are you kidding? It's- I uh, I played games that I would have tough. never have played. True, because of games. That's Pass. true. Camp Chefs, Here's an example. Camp Chef says I started Minecraft Dungeons, then I started Breath of the Wild, then Gear Club Unlimited Two, then Kingdom Hearts Final Mix. That's just in the past three weeks. Kingdom Hearts Final Mix is going mean, to take you a good minute there. That's the challenge of our of our time. Is there's so much good content. I mean, to it's a good problem to have. Play, right? Yeah. So, but no, great question. Thank you very much, Psychotic, for writing in Spicy Yakuza. Yeah. We talked about it last week. You had yet to have played it. This is our game uh, club game of the month. To join the game club, just come join us over on Discord. We play a month, a game every week that, we, or every month yeah. that we focus on. Yakuza Zero for you, Spicy. Give me your first impressions. <laughs> this is, it's like one of the greatest games ever made. Well, I would like. Where are you at in the in the game? How far in are you? Uh, um, um, pr- uh, chapter two okay. in the are middle you, of chapter okay. two. Okay. Are you managing businesses? <laughs> <laughs> if no. you know what I mean, if you but, know what I mean, you take the, care of your business. The side quest that I've been, I've been just like exploring the city, and there is some of the funniest side quests. Have you like helped the ba- the guy in a band? Yet? No, not yet. Not oh yet. my gosh, there is some of the gr- this game. I don't know how many screenshots I've taken. Have you? Hi- <laughs> have you? I, I have helped a business. Have you helped the? masochist dominate dominatrix girl yet <laughs> no. have you have you met her yet uh, you go- <laughs> i gotta show you some screenshots let me, <laughs> so let me ask you th- there's this dominatrix girl okay and she is just not mean enough to her her clients and you go in and teach her how to whip and <laughs> so- well what what i've noticed in the game and heard from other people is the main story is kind of serious a serious tone yeah. and the side quests are just like They're, they took whatever ideas they could so let me let me it. tell you so i'm helping this dominatrix whore whatever who would it hooker Hewer. hooker girl and i take her out to this like park and i'm teaching her how to say like stuff to demean people her clients you know <laughs> yeah. and these kids walk up these little kids are like what you doing and you can choose how to enter it's just like the whole thing i can't wait till you have that quest that side quest i took probably like 15 screenshots of the dialogue of that alone <laughs> on my uh, on my xbox just to prove that that existed Dude, uh, what, that, yeah, it's, it's, what a game it's i'm fun. excited to get further into it as so well. the story by the way is excellent mm-hmm. um what's crazy about the cutscenes in that game is every time there's a cutscene, your controller, like, you know how you have the timer where the screen goes dim? Uh-huh. It goes oh, they're off. Long. Yeah, oh, they're yeah, because they're, they're like they're 10 way minutes. Super long cutscenes. And they're very good. Yeah. Like, there is a lot going well, on. Well, that's why I think, like, it being in Japanese and you reading it actually helps the game in this scenario, right? It feels like you're almost more focused on the story, right? Yeah. But it's, uh, it's really good. I still <laughs> think one of my favorite parts is when you... Have to sober up the drunk people. <laughs> and you just beat the crap. Well, out and of his them. line was so funny. He goes, "The guy goes, why don't we just go around? I will sober them with my fist. <laughs> I will like, sober them. Like the and game like, okay. is so it's it's very good, but I am laughing so <laughs> hard. It's, it's there's <laughs> so many good like it t- it tickles me in all the right places. It does, and that's what you get with uh, the Japanese games. <laughs> it makes you excited for the new Yakuza coming out. Dragon, right? Like a dragon. Yeah. The side quest, man. The side quest. But yeah, the main quest is excellent so so far. Yeah, this game is on Game Pass, so come join us if you haven't had a chance to jump into it yet. Uh, it's 
it's, it's a good time. We're, yeah. That's their game of, even... of this month. <laughs> uh, let's take one more question. Uh, let's do AOG Wardog. He asks, he, he writes in and says, I bought a gaming PC recently and have been gaming on it a lot. I've been playing games like Tarkov, Post Scriptum, and Insurgency Sandstorm. Oh, that's a good My one. question for you guys, with realistic shooters continuing to gain traction and more people playing them, would it be viable or possible that we could see the market really open up on consoles? He says, I know I've asked before about game ports from PC, but I'm asking about whole new games this time around and opening up or being able to market on consoles. Want to know your thoughts are. Keep up the awesome work, guys. Let's start with with Spicy. What are your thoughts on um, uh, these realistic type shooters? Is there going to be, in this next generation particularly, right, uh, a more open market, a space for them on consoles? For for simulator PvP, basically. Basically, like, yeah. Like an escape from Tarkov. Yeah. For sure, um, they don't. I don't think they exist yet. I even think uh, Vigor is not at that point. Oh no, it's no. very arcadish and has a lot of control things and stuff like that. I think for a game like that to happen, it has to be built specifically for a console, just like Warface Breakout. I think that is the, that is a good example of a CS:GO style game coming to a console that's built for a console and works for a console. You cannot take a game like Tarkov or Arma or those style of games because of the complexity on how they did the inputs uh, for all the different variations of things you can do. You can do. I think it can be done. I think with especially with how we can do uh, modifier keys yeah. now, um, especially with the Elite controller. But you don't necessarily need the elite controller to do a modifier key. You can. I, I've played a game before. This was years ago. I don't know. I can't remember which one it was. But you just held the left trigger and it changed the A B X Y um, buttons. Like it was just the left trigger was a modifier for doing. I think that was Dragon Age. Dragon Age. One, Dragon yeah, Age. The first one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you could. It would modify those keys um, because you have access to stuff like that. Um, I think it can be done uh, because like. In those in those simulator games, you have things where you can peek around the wall and shoot blind, like not like how like uh, Gears does it, but a very specific way to do it. You can check the chamber. You can um, pop out the bullet in the chamber and grab it with your hand. You can uh, you can do a million different variations of key bindings with these PC games, but that's because. They were made with a keyboard in mind. You can get to that level with modifier keys on a, on a controller, um, but a, the game has to be built from the ground up for that to happen. So yeah. there is a place for it, but it needs to be built in a very specific way and developed in a very specific way to do it. I would buy a game that does that for sure. So I know that there's there's an audience. Yeah. yeah. One, what you're going to be able to... I mean, graphically speaking to... What developers are going to have options open? I don't even know what I'm saying. It's late. That's yeah, great. I hear it. Uh, that's yeah, yeah. Good, good for you. Uh, graphics. You know yes. what? Uh, yeah, yeah, cool. what uh, go you ahead. Can try, do? Try no, start uh, finish this up here with which is, I, I, So I think games like Tarkov. I, I actually really like that game style. It's why I liked Vigor because it was it was it was a similar game style. Yeah. On it's console, the same, right? It's like a. It's like. The overarching genre. Yeah, yeah, that right? genre, right? Now, Tarkov is cool because it's in first person. I really like first person, and it has that simulator hardcore feel. Now, funny enough, I, I, I actually uh, have it written down on a paper because I was I, if Tarkov came to, to Xbox, I'd buy it day one, right? For sure, I, I would I, too, I'd yeah. buy the $5,000 Edge of Darkness <laughs> just day one, hands down, right? <laughs> I was actually thinking, and I think I'm going to send a letter to Battlestate Games. I actually thought of a – like, I think it can work on the controller. It, it's just like you said; it's with modifier keys. All, all and I, I have it written down because I, yeah, I wrote. I was like, I was like, you know, I, you could do this. I can do this. <laughs> it's so like, like watching uh, beautiful, yeah, beautiful mind. mind. With yeah, Jordan, like, Jordan had a moment. Yeah, he had a moment. No, I wrote it down on a piece of paper because I, I was like, you know, you could do this, right? Like I said, so basically, like, like for example, in Tarkov, to check your mag, it's Alt T, right? So you, it, it's kind mm -hmm. of a. For, for me, it is. It's kind of a weird binding, but that's its default binding. Alt T, right? And that pulls out your mag, that's and you look and you at it. Look yeah, and, and it says it, it says about half full. You know, it tells you how much is left in your mag, right? And what bullet no, types and, yeah, are in and there? And what bullet type it is, right? So on on 
on console, on a controller, I was like, okay, well, Y is usually reload. Why not just do down on the D-pad Y? And each arrow of the D-pad is a modifier key. It's a key. modifier key, gotcha. So, for example, another example, in Tarkov, it's left, alt, right click to change, if your scope allows it, to change the, the sight on your scope. Uh -huh. So I was thinking, oh, well, same thing, down on the D-pad, left trigger, because that's usually your aim. You the know dot I mean? reticle on your yeah, scope. Yeah, the dot reticle on your thing. So I was like, this could be done, right? The only thing that I ran into trouble with, and it's what I want to talk to Battlestate Games about, I'll put in my letter, is I don't know how you do the menu. You would have to almost completely revamp the menu to put it on console. No, the, like going through the... Like going through someone's... Uh, Just do the Destiny menu. Just have a hovering mouse. I guess you could. I mean, I guess you could. That's what they all do now. Ah, all right. Every uh, game there does you go. that now. I'll add that to my letter. I can imagine Jordan being butt naked in the morning. He just hopped out of the shower, and he's got a marker in the bathroom <laughs> drawing on the <laughs> mirror. <laughs> and, and his wife comes in going, what are you doing? And he's like, it's possible. It's, it's possible. possible. I, f I figured it out. It's possible. I think we've got do it. Do you no, know what this how, means? How have yeah. I not seen this before? No, because uh, Tarkov... <laughs> Tarkov is definitely... It was right there in front of my face <laughs> the whole, whole time. time. Tar it's just the menu. <laughs> All we have to solve is the menu. Yeah, that, that's it. Tarkov is is really... It's it's one of my top three games. It's That genre of game is becoming my new... Like, I, I like... It's the like risk-reward. Yeah, I love that style. You know he what I mean? That the butt clench. Yeah, 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 and that one is a real it's, big one. So it's the culmination. Each match is, a, is just the culmination of all these micro decisions. Yeah. And, and when it pays off, that's amazing. And the thing is, is in Tarkov, when you go into the menu, you can change all your key bindings, like Alt-T to check your mag. You can change it to, you know, one or whatever. Just allow that on the console, which a lot of games do when you go into the menu it and just have, again, the modifier key. So, like, in World of Warcraft, when I change my key binds, I do Shift-1 as one key bind, right, on the console, down Y. You know what I mean? Just let the D-pad, which is essentially how many, but you know, up it is one modifier, side, left, right, I mean... And the thing is, is you can say, Jordan, but that's hard. How would I know which D-pad's which? Well, let me tell you about Tarkov. You don't, know what key, you don't know what key binding's which anyway. You have to learn it and figure it out. <laughs> there is <laughs> like, a that's good... That's the point of the game. There's a good I mean? two so. weeks of playing with your friends where you go, now, how, how do I check my inventory? Uh, <laughs> no. Well, and even getting back into it, I asked. I, I think it, w it was either you or me asked the question, like, hey, how do you change your scope again? And it was it was left, alt, right click right or something. Click, yeah, like, yeah. And I was like, okay, there it, is. You know, there it is, and this and that. So... Anyway, I, I love these style of games, and uh, we do have a, he talked about Surgency, or Insurgency, which yeah, is another answer. which another fantastic game, which is coming to console. I think, just like Counter-Strike, there is a space on the console for it. Warzone jumped in, and, and soon Crossfire is going to jump into that Counter-Strike, you know, on the Xbox, on yeah. the Xbox and, and in the console space. I think games like, like Tarkov and Arma... And Surgency and Sand or Insurgency Sandstorm, which we're getting later this year, there's definitely a spot on the console. Well, for even it. so, there's this merge between games. Even in this generation, I think this generation, what we saw that we never saw before was real time strategy, turn based strategy type of games make a big push on consoles. You got Stellaris, uh, a War Groove. Yeah. You've got Civilization, the full version of a Civilization, not like its own side console version, mm -hmm. right? that have all made their way to console. I think we're getting to a point, and you can see Microsoft's strategy, uh, and then PlayStation kind of try, trying to do it as well, is games from there are going to be on PC. And I think as you open up the next generation of consoles to developers, there's going to be no reason for a developer not to have their game yeah. also on console, right? Like yeah. just the more, it's just going to be an additional player base to try to get yeah. get your game there. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what developers do. I mean, going back to to Tarkov Battlestate Games, I'm I think I've seen them. They've come out a couple times and said, "Hey, no, this is a PC game. It's only for the PC." They're not bashing the consoles in any way. They just that's where they want their game, which is 100% okay. But I would like to see someone like a Warface or or a developer like that who brought Warface to the console to bring a game like Tarkov, a serious yeah. simulation and just, PvP I mean, game. honestly, just steal their idea. That's what every other game. I mean, just I did. just make it take place in South America and call it Rokoff. Face something. war. Face war. Yeah, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> just, just do it. Uh, but anyway, I just I would love to see more of those games. I mean, yeah. why can't games be cross? That we are. I mean, you that's know, what, that's that's, that's the get. future, right? Uh, great question, AOG. Thank you very much for writing in, guys. That does us for this week. We hope you guys had a fantastic week. We hope you have a fantastic week. We'll be back at our normal time next week. This was uh, 
a day a day late on a Saturday. Thank I'm you a for dollar everybody short. who joined us live. Yeah. Yeah, if fun. you've never joined us live, come join us live over on Mixer.com forward slash X1 Bros. Yeah, I'll hit that outro now. Is that all right? Yeah. Uh, yeah you yeah. still have 20 seconds, though. I have nothing to say. <laughs> are you the, how, are you tired? Hey, I yeah, heard your AC broke tired. at your work too. Did it break or something? Oh yeah, it's man, it's just all it was, over the. It was out for like they're a, breaking everywhere. Like a week, it was hell. Given Marks was actually my fault. But. Yeah, m- mine's broken because of somebody in this room. But we can oh. fix it. No. Oh what? What'd you do? <laughs> I'll tell you afterwards. Oh okay. <laughs> and on that note, thanks <laughs> right. everybody. Have a good one, everybody. Appreciate Bye. You. Bye.